It's just support, Tom! See a pretty old you know, meta game deck, you can probably say in Rakdos Sacrifice in round number one. Oh yeah, I am very excited to see this one. It is going to be Matt Zhu playing the Sacrifice side, and Akira is going to be playing the Mono White Control Caretaker's Talent deck. This is something we saw a little bit from him last week. We already see both these players have kind of started out. Akira's got an Iron Crag to get some Mono Ramp out there, and then Blood Tithe Harvester, Uncommon All-Star from Matt. <laughs> Well, you can take the vampires out in the metagame, but you're not going to take Blood Tide Harvester no. out, unfortunately. Definitely not. This card is kind of like a Swiss Army Knife for most decks. It's a glue in the Sacrifice deck as the activated ability and the Blood Token kind of play into the synergy. Uh, and this is just going to kind of be something that Akira needs to keep his eyes peeled for. But it looks like he does have some responses. Yeah, it looks like an end step Wandering Emperor. So... The fact that Wandering Emperor is, you, I think he mined this, is that if I'm correct? Yeah, just minusing to make a, uh, make a Samurai there. This is being powered up by that Iron Crag. The fast mana available from Akira's side is going to be very powerful, and this is going to allow Akira to kind of play a little bit ahead of the curve, give more of a control -y aspect to the deck, even though Mono White doesn't have the same sort of interaction that you get when you have an Azorius combo here. We are going to see a uh, wedding announcement getting played, as well as a bunch of these Samurai tokens starting to get made. So Akira's game plan is going to be control the board through tokens, and he doesn't care if he winds up playing board wipes against his own stuff. Oh, so it looks like... We're going, I, I, so if, I, if I'm familiar with this uh, Rack of Sacrifice deck, it's going to use Witches of it and Cauldron Familiar, if oh, yeah. correctly, just to basically do a loop on your opponent. Yeah, so at this point in time, Matt has kind of uh, changed the deck to be a little bit more Jundi because he's playing this Yigra Eater of All, which is going to combo with those Cauldron Familiars. Basically now, if you wind up having Yigra, and two Cauldron Familiars, you're able to kind of loop through infinitely and drain your opponent out for an infinite amount of damage. Now, Yigra is going to make every single creature food, so you don't even really need to have Oven. You just need to have two cats, one in the graveyard and one on the battlefield. For a while. So from what I've seen from skimming over the Pioneer Medley game on Modo is this Yigra card is looking at every deck I see at top of his. <laughs> this card might be breaking the format, you yeah, say. Yeah, is very powerful because it unlocks its infinite combo, and it kind of replaces Corvold in the old Jun Citadel decks, and it's just a more powerful straight-up card to kind of deal with that way. Uh, the downside is... the deck is a little bit more hurt by graveyard hate so if you see a lot of visit phoenix the yeager deck is also going to take some splash damage because of that on the side of akira though we just wind up seeing the wandering emperor kind of tick up we wind up having a caretaker's talent uh wind up going into the bin there from his side and we are just going to wind up seeing hollowed moonlight getting cycled here just to draw a card and, and then revealing something uh that can't be discarded because it's a land <laughs> of this thought sees well at least it takes care of that caretaker's talent if i'm correct yeah another new card from bloomboro like can you explain, like, what the hell does this card do? All right, so this Caretaker's Talent basically is the control engine from Akira's side here. It's going to wind up triggering whenever you have one or more tokens enter the battlefield. So you can draw a card, and that's going to wind up happening once per turn. So if Akira flashes in a Wandering Emperor on Matt's turn, it can trigger on his opponent's turn as well. Then it's going to wind up leveling up eventually to become this Anthem effect. It gives plus two, plus two. So all these one ones and two twos become formidable foes for the Sacrifice deck. And most importantly, protects them from being down by Mayhem Devil. That's pretty neat. Well, I do see one part of the combo in Magic Sand, which is going to be the Witch's Oven, which I think if you what you have a cat here, you probably are most likely going to go off. I'm not too sure what the conditions are need, are needed for Rack to Sacrifice to really show its true power. Matt needs one more cat uh, in order to go off. If one's in that pile of cards in his graveyard, that's all he's going to need for the Yeager combo to kind of work. But Akira, on the flip side, has played a Carrot Cake, which is a new Bloomborough card. It creates a 1-1 Rabbit on entry and when it dies. But now these 1-1 Rabbits are about to become 2-2s two because of this wedding announcement that's going to flip. So without a Mayhem Devil early, Matt Ju is going to be in a difficult spot because all of these tokens are going to start having 2 and 3 toughness, which is going to be very difficult for him to fight through, especially with this follow-up Yorian from Akira resets the Wandering Emperor, gets another activation, and resets the Carrot Cake. Just look how many tokens are here. I don't think we're looking at a control deck anymore. I think this might be one the way aggro at this point. <laughs> See, the thing is, it's very interesting because Akira's deck isn't aggro like turn one, turn two, turn three, kill you the way Convoke is, but it's just utilizing all of these blink effects, almost 
it's not quite death in taxes because you're not taxing your opponent unless you count taxing their life total. But you are just creating a insurmountable board advantage that means that all of these hollowed moonlight and destruction get lost effects become your control package. So we're going to sack the blood token here from Azure to discard a land and oh, that's a Fable of Mirror Breaker, but Fable's decent here. Bad here. I think, I mean, you're still going to survive most likely what's going to win Akira Swings Wide. So you might as well, you know, try to draw, draw two, discard two, and maybe you hit double cat. So yeah, I was going to mention the double cat there's a really solid point, Kyle, because normally from the Rakdos Sacrifice version of this deck, Having a flipped wedding announcement is basically lights out for your deck. Your Mayhem Devil triggers are not good enough anymore to kill your opponent's creatures, and you have to try to deal 20 damage from nowhere. But with the Yeager combo, that's going to wind up being enough to kind of generate a backup plan to fight through all these tokens. But we see a Get Lost getting played here from Akira. If this targets the Yeager, he can just sacrifice one of his infinite number of tokens to pay the ward cost, and yeah, that's what's going to happen. So now, now Matt's looking in trouble. Not looking too high here, but you do get two map tokens, so you can dig a little bit more, but now you need, need a little bit more than just two cats to get out from this situation here. Oh, don't forget this Yorian is swinging in as well. So we have all these three, three Vigilant Samurais, two, two Rabbits swinging in, and we wind up having the Yorian, so I think that's lights out. Yeah, so game number one's going to match you here with an impressive showing of the deck from Akira of Mono White control with caretaker talent yeah and the the strategy that akira is implementing here is yeah, something that we've seen before from these yorian style decks where you're trying to leverage yorian as not only your companion to have a ton of additional cards so that you can just have every sort of token effect and anthem effect that's in the format in your 80 card deck but the yorian itself is going to add a little bit extra to this list because you're going to be able to reset a lot of these tokens token generators you're going to be able to reset things like your planeswalkers like we saw from the wandering emperor and the list in and of itself has a little bit more staying power because even after a board wipe if you wind up minusing the wandering emperor that's what you see from like azoria's control decks but if you do that blink it with the wandering Emperor, blink it with the orion and then get a second wandering emperor activation all of a sudden you basically recovered your entire board state <laughs> So we're pretty lucky to have Akira's uh, decklist as of right now mm -hmm. for this Mono Blight Caretaker Talent deck. So it looks like we have... Wow, what's a new card from... I forgot the creature that's a 4 mana from Bloomboro. Oh, I don't remember the name, but... Warp. Is Warpero really being played in this deck? I... I'm not entirely sure. Um, I, <laughs> the thing that I'm really just kind of drawing my eyes to for Makira's sideboard plan here, the, the Bezas are fine in the top side because that's just another blink effect. And against aggro decks, you wind up recouping lost life and getting some tokens. But the big thing I'm seeing here from Makira's side are these three rest in pieces that you wind oh, up yeah. having. So we mentioned already that putting Yigra in the Rakdo Sacrifice deck and making it more of a Jun style does make it a little bit more susceptible to just hard graveyard hate than it was before. You are more reliant on that cat combo to kind of bail you out in some scenarios because you're cutting down on your interaction and you're cutting down on some of your card advantage in order to put this infinite combo in your deck. That's for sure. So, yeah, rest, does Rakdos Sacrifice have an answer to enchantments like Rest in Peace, like at all, in the sideboard? Not really. That's the downside of the Rakdos part of the deck. However, if you are now on this Jund plan, you get access to things like Pick Your Poison, which can be a lot more effective. However, if you look at Akira's list on the screen, there are a lot of enchantments that Akira can oh, yeah. sacrifice <laughs> instead. So maybe if you're running Abrupt Decay, if you play Terra Sunder or something along those lines, then you have targeted removal for the rest in peace from the side of Matt. But if you're not, you're probably just going to wind up having to attack Akira's hand. You are on the play. Thoughtseize and Duress are very powerful against Akira's deck because, as you saw before, there's not a ton of actual creatures besides Beza. Everything else are spells. Yeah, I mean, Ash is going to be on the play now. I, I, we didn't see who got first, but I'm pretty sure, as most people have been saying in the store, Pioneers feels very play draw dependent. Yeah, I agree with that if you're playing against Convoke. Uh, <laughs> I agree if you're playing against Slickshot Show Off. I'm not entirely sold with the banning of Soren, with the banning of Amalia especially. I think the format is more of kind of balanced out on that end. Uh, this is obviously just my opinion. I'm, 
I didn't think it was that play draw dependent to begin with. But I think right now with the bands and the combo decks kind of taking a backseat to more of these mid-range strategies and things like Akira is able to do, I don't think you're necessarily going to be that hurt if you are on the draw, which Akira is this game, and Matt's just going to start off by playing his cat. So he's already got one of the pieces he was missing last game. For sure. I mean, just getting the count early is always nice. You can be swinging for one every turn here. We have a Sunken Citadel played by Akira here. Most likely always going to name White here. And we have three mana potentially. And what is that card? Is that Gideon? I don't know, actually. Is that his rest in peace? Did he just slam that right now? All these different arts from Rest in Peace yeah. in the recent times. and Oh, okay. So, yeah, it was a Rest in Peace, and that's going to be Feed the Swarm that comes out. So, Matt does have this hate card in his sideboard. Feed the Swarm was a little bit of an older card from, like, the third romp around Zendikar. And this is going to be something that you wind up losing life in order to kill an enchantment. But it is basically one of the only targeted enchantment hate from Black that costs less than three mana. But... Whoa. You might be wanting to have that now that this wedding announcement has hit. So Matt is going to have to try to dig for that Mayhem Devil quickly, which looks like he does have one in hand to try to get rid of these tokens before they become too big to fight. I also see a Get Lost in Akira's hand here. So if we do see another Yidra do come down, or even the Mayhem Devil, Akira will at least can stall the game out for a little bit longer. But also, I just think Akira drew a Wandering Emperor. So... A little bit of a classic past past turn, do nothing. Wait until Magic plays his hand out. He's gonna swing for one though, and step trigger the winning announcement and give two count. Oh no, sorry, so one or two counters to. No, it's just getting uh, an additional token. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Kira was just grabbing the dice and then forgot that we have the tokens on the side here. But most importantly, Maju has missed a land drop. As you see, he was on the play, but now Akira with four lands and Matt with only two. So he is going to end step, fatal push away one of these tokens. Yigra, double Mayhem Devil in hand, but still no fourth mana. So right now, Mayhem Devil, like you said, Kyle, could eat that get lost, maybe gets rid of one token, but then you're still going to flip the wedding announcement and have a second token on the battlefield next turn. For sure. I mean, Dorian Daju as a player, I'm pretty sure he's just going to play out the Mayhem Devil, try to bail out some removal, and then probably find a way to pop off the next, you know, next turn or two. Yeah, and now what Matt has to do is he kind of has to play the waiting game, because if he, he'll be able to sacrifice... Oh, okay, so we did... That was a treasure token, not a food token. Okay, so we are going to wind up having this treasure token pop. Now with this trigger on the stack, we're probably going to see Akira get rid of something. Oh, no, he's actually going to wind up playing uh, the Wandering Emperor, and no, puts a counter on the token. Oh my god. So the human is just going to live. Yeah, that's actually a, a big heads up play from Akira because that saves that get loss for like a Yigur or something. And Sunfall comes out. Yeah, okay, maybe that's why Akira did uh, that. Okay, I, I understand now. Sunfall, a card that is terrorizing uh, standard as of now. Same playability as well in this deck where you guys are going to exile everything, you know, and eventually slowly beat your opponent down with an incubated token. And they are just going to end up having this samurai into the battlefield. The flip from the, from the uh, wedding announcement, we wind up having this incubate token that can't be popped quite yet. But now Akira, all of a sudden, this is what we were talking about in sideboard. All of a sudden, post board wipe, Akira has just as many things, if not more, than he had at the beginning of the turn. <laughs> Well, Maju still stuck on three lands here, and it's not looking too hot, especially if you're on that side where you're facing a board with a flip running announcement, a Wandering Emperor, a 3 3 Samurai, if I'm pretty sure with Vigilance, and also does a human and incubator token where I can flip at any point in time that it can become a threat. Matt has a Colgon's Command in hand, which is looking okay on this board it can get rid of the human token it could get rid of the incubate token because it is an artifact so you can wind up having to destroy artifact mode but right now it's just kind of buying some time and matt's going to play out this blood tithe harvester and get a blood mostly because he needs to dig for additional lands the yeager is in hand there's a cauldron familiar in the graveyard and if you have your yeager survive rip a cauldron familiar that's his path to victory in this game but we know that akira has answers we're gonna swing now with the human ch and with the oh sorry with the samurai. So we're gonna chump lock the, the samurai with the blood tide harvester. Pass go. Now we're gonna hopefully potentially see. Maybe Magic can find a land drop here. But what is that? Oh, uh, he's gonna pitch the deadly dispute to the uh, the token, ah, the blood okay. token there. So he's just trying to find just find an herborg. So everyone's gonna have black mana. 
uh, but had to wind up doing... Oh, he deadly disputed the token away. That's what wound up happening. Nice. So then he winds up just making the treasure token, finds the land, recoups a little bit of lost tempo, but passes the turn with Mayhem Devil, Yigra, and Colgon's command in hand. It looks like a Witch's Oven as well. Yeah, so I'm not too sure what lie Magic can do here, but you're still very much alive at 14 health here. But also as well, you gotta try to play, be conscious of a cure having removal at any point in time here. So we're just gonna play out the Witch's Oven and pass go. Yeah, I think what Matt needs to do now is hope that there's a sequence of draws within the next couple of turns that's like land Cauldron Familiar, and then try to play Cauldron Familiar, bait out removal, and then play Yigra so that you have the window to kind of go off. But Akira still has multiple cards in hand, four cards altogether, is making an army of tokens that is only going to get bigger and bigger, and it's a rough spot for the sacrifice deck. Oh yeah, I mean, Akira making a fish on end stub here, sending a message where we're gonna just go wide. Might as well flip the incubated token, swing for what? Three, so, oh yeah, it's four, eight. Everything is pumped up by one, and yeah. Matt is gonna be able to at least fatal push this incubate token, but that's still four, seven damage altogether. So Matt's, this is a two turn clock. Matt Zhu really needs to find a way to get out of this situation here. Also, Akira leaving with, leaving up what? Three, four, five mana? is always scary to see from the control deck yeah most importantly um hollowed moonlight from akira's side is also a potential stopper to matt's combo because you're going to wind up having things come from the graveyard we've seen hollow moonlight used against phoenix decks for that exact reason uh indomitable creativity decks as well just to kind of stop what they're going to do matt did wind up finding another land here but i'm don't think this is going to be enough because he doesn't have enough to kind of play Yigra and one other creature to wind up getting that cat back with the Witch's Oven food. I mean, I think what, double Mayhem Devil again in hand. And then Yigra, I mean, I don't know what the exact line is, but also we do know there is a cat in the graveyard. So maybe we can find a way to pump up and gain some life out of nowhere i don't think so though yeah because right now there's a shock land in matt's hand a blood crypt so if he plays the shock land he goes down to five and he has to present enough blockers to not be lethal and right now akira is representing at least four if not five attackers with the fountain port able to make another fish yeah this, these fish death by fish you hate to see it yeah and all of these fish and rabbits and soldiers are tutus remember because of the flip wedding announcement so that means that matt has to be able to block all of the samurai and there's still a plus one plus one counter that can come through from the wandering emperor so matt has to present three potential blockers or a way to kill three creatures on akira's side Matt you're thinking long and hard, like trying to find a way to even skate out, to even make it to the next turn. So it looks like we might be playing the Coligan's Command. Yeah, K Command is okay here because you can wind up killing one of these tutus. You can get back a one drop creature and then you can play that, sack it, get a food back, get your cat back, and then potentially live at one. So but you have to take one damage from the Sulphur Spring. So you're going to wind up getting the cat back so it negates the damage here and just has Akira wind up losing a little bit of life from the cat. And you can kind of stonewall one of those, but... Oh, sorry. Matt didn't have to take damage from that Sulphur Spring because of the Urborg. I forgot about that. So Matt's going to be at 8. Akira's down to 15 from the Colgon's Command, just doming him for 2. And it looks like Matt is just going to... Uh, make a food. Make the food right now. So Akira now at 14, Mashu now at 8, we have, I think, what, 4, like 6? So we have two fish that can attack and two samurai. This is going to be representing 4 plus 6 damage. You can block one of the samurai. That's still going to be 7, 8 damage here. So I think Mash is dead. Unless there's like a fatal pushing yeah, hand that we've missed. Unless, I think there is a pushing hand here because we're going to sack of food, get the culture for me back, go up to nine. All right, so Matt could live at one here. Yeah, so taking eight damage going down to one. So Matt's out right now is basically draw other cat, but we know that Akira has the answer to Yigra. That's true. Also, does get lost also hit which is of it? I don't think so, right? Oh, Akira is going to wind up casting the backside of this land. Oh. So he's going to wind up getting two 4 4 angels. That's going to tap him out, I believe. Akira does have to tap his mana. Yeah, Akira not tapping mana here is pretty questionable. Because this is a 7 cost, so that, yeah, that taps Akira out. 
Yeah, so, all right, so this, if there's a cat off the top, Matt can wind up comboing. You're dead if I drew a cat. Let's see. No he did cat not draw a cat. Akira winning 2-0. Pretty impressive. <laughs>